Hey, good morning this morning. Tim Jones in for Jamie Allman. Welcome to Allman in the Morning. Welcome to Thursday, which means tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> Got Denise and Katie in studio here. Thank you, ladies, for everything this week. Thanks for filling Thank in. Thank you. It's been all good. Trish is in the back, man in the phones, taking your phone calls. And we've got a really special guest coming up here, which we're going to speak to, is uh, former Cardinals great. I remember him extremely well because I lived in New York for 10 years. I went to school up there. Mm -hmm. So I left at the age of 18, fresh out of St. Louis U High, went up and I went to Fordham and St. John's and I practiced law for a few years. I was a prosecutor. So I came back right around the time. Rick Ankiel was the phenomenon, mm -hmm. which is what his book, his current book is titled. And so I remember it very well because it was one of my first big memories of coming back home because this was, uh, I cannot believe this was this long ago now. <laughs> um, Rick had, he, he's going to talk to me about this in a minute, the big day, you know, that he, the pitch that changed his life back in October of 2000. So that was, yeah, 17 17 years ago. So I was 28. I had just gotten back to St. Louis. So I remember Rick Ankiel well. So it's a real pleasure and honor to speak with him. And he joins us now. He's at the, T-H-E-E, -E, I like that, at the Rick Ankiel. Rick, RickAnkielBook.com. Rick, welcome to the show. What's up, guys? How are you? We're doing great. We're doing great. We've got Denise and uh, Katie in the studio here with me, and uh, we're um, happy to speak with you today. So, Rick, you were, um, you were, uh, are you still in St. Louis? I know you were here yesterday. Yeah, I'm here till I'm here through the weekend. Oh, fantastic, fantastic! So, we'll talk about what else you got going on in a minute. But let's talk about um, let's talk about you. Um, and you just wrote a book called The Phenomenon. And uh, you know, Rick, I, I, I was just saying, I can't believe it's been 17 years. So let's uh, let's refresh people's memories about you know what Rick Ankiel was doing in the year 2000, and then what happened. All right, yeah. I mean, you know, that was my my first full season in the big leagues, and uh, you know, everything was going great until, you know, until that first playoff game against the Braves, and then I threw a pitch that just quite didn't sit right. Um, wasn't a terrible pitch, but you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, man, I just threw a wild pitch, um, and uh, you know, I pushed it away. But then a couple pitches later, it just seemed like stuff started to unravel, like the curveball. Then I started to throw stuff off the backstop, and you know, when I was so young, I just. You know, I really had no idea what was going on, and uh, you know, I even remember after the game telling the media, you know, hey, this is a mechanical flaw, and it'll never happen again. And um, you know, before my next start, game two of the playoffs against the Mets in my my bullpen session, I was lights out. I thought, oh man, I got this. This, this is gone. I'm good. You know, no worries. I'm um, going into game two, and, and uh, you know, it just started to happen again. And you know, even going into the off season, you know, I, I just figured, hey, you know, it must have been a glitch. You know, I'll get away from baseball for a little bit here in the off season. When I get back to it, everything will be fine. But little did I know, um, you know, that I'd be battling that for the next four years. Yeah, Rick, that must have been something else because so you were you were how old in two thousand? Twenty one. You were twenty one years old, but you'd been pitching for how many years at this point? I'm I'm, I'm assuming you played as a youngster in high school and college. Uh, yeah, since I was a little kid, uh, pitching and every. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was always you know, it was just one of those things that was God given talent. I was always. Um, you know, really good at it, and uh, you know, it came out of nowhere. I never, you know, I never had anything like that happen before, or right. anything like that before that day, and even in, even that day leading up to the game. Um, you know, I remember, before, you know, I was facing uh, Greg Maddox of the Braves, and I grew up a big Braves fan, so you know, that was one of those moments for me that you know I thought was going to be really special. And you know, before the game, I was in the clubhouse practicing swinging a bat, I was more concerned about getting a hit off Greg Maddox than I was pitching because I just felt like the pitching was going to take care of itself. So you're, you're pitching for all these years as a youngster, high school, college, you make the big leagues, every young kid's dream, you're playing for the St. Louis Cardinals, one of the most storied franchises, this happens to you. I can't imagine, Rick, what you must have gone through during that offseason and then coming back the next year. I mean, that must have been that must have been an incredible burden to bear. And it, how did you, how did you start... What did you do next? How did you figure this out? You know, like I said, I went into the off season thinking, "Hey, this is <clears throat> this is gonna, you know, I'll be fine. This is just gonna take, you know, take care of itself. I'll get away from the game, and and uh, we'll be good to go." And then leading up to um, leading up to that 2001 season, um, you know, I just started to realize, "Hey, this isn't gone," and, and uh, you know, 
if anything, it's gotten deeper than it was before. And, and uh, you know, I finally reached out to Harvey Dorfman, who was a sports psychologist that worked for my agent, Scott Boris, um, and said, hey, look, let's, uh, you know, let's talk because I, I don't, you know, I don't know what else to do. I'm, I'm lost here. I can't, you know, the more I throw, the worse it gets, it seems like. And, um, you know, that's when, when our my relationship with him started. And, uh, you know, he, he tried to give me tools and, and techniques to, to cope and, and help me get past it. And eventually, I mean, I, I from reading about the book, it really, I mean, you were very honest about your troubled childhood and the issues with your father and your, some of the other family members. And you really kind of lay your heart out there. But Harvey a bit of a savior for you, right? Like he got you back and he transformed you. You, you still were a baseball player, but just in a different way. And that was probably a lot to wrap your head around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was, you know, he's, he really became that positive male uh, role model in my life. And, you know, and it just blossomed into a father figure. And, and, uh, you know, I can't thank him enough. I was, you know, just so sad to see him go when he passed. And, um, you know, I wish he was still here now just to be able to see to, to where I've gotten and, and uh, from where I've been to where I am now, you know, it's something I'm very proud of. And, you know, it's hard enough to make it to the big league once, but, you know, I get to say, hey, I made it twice in that two different positions. Well, Rick, I know you've got to run to another event. Uh, really appreciate the time this morning. I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. At the, T-H-E-E, at the Rick Ankiel. RickAnkielBook.com. You can look up everything he's doing in St. Louis and around the country. Uh, Rick, uh, really admire you coming back in the face of such adversity and succeeding in your life. And, and all the best to you, my friend. I appreciate that. You guys have a great day and a great weekend. Hey, thank you so much. That was uh, Rick Ankiel. What a, uh, what a story, huh, ladies? I mean, that's... That's amazing. He's he's such a chipper, cheerful, full person at this early in the morning. It's awesome. So, um, so the book is called The Phenomenon, and I I didn't get to ask you about the subtitle. It's very clever. <laughs> it is. It's uh, let's see, pressure, the yips, and the pitch that changed my life. And uh, <laughs> I think a lot of us in St. Louis, we remember the meltdown, mm-hmm. but we don't remember what happened afterwards because he right. left. Because he right. left. And you know how it is with baseball. Players come, players go. They get traded. And mm-hmm. I, I remember the meltdown. But I do I do remember there was a redemption story there. I just don't remember much about it. And so, you know, like Denise and I were saying, this this might be something good that's beyond baseball to read. Right. You know? And, and especially something for, like, young athletes to, to read. Because everyone kind of goes through a time where it's like, I'm, you're, not, you're not playing well or something goes wrong and how to get back on track. And playing sports can be so brutally dramatic Mm -hmm. uh, in in the true sense of the word for like your psyche right because every time there's a winner and a loser Mm -hmm. and it really it really toughens you for life you know to play a sport whether it's a team sport an individual sport Mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't know how professional golfers do it. I mean, there's, you very rarely win. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. You may be in the top 100, which is great, and you could be a multimillionaire. Yes, you, know? you can. But but dealing with not being the winner, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. and, and it's all the hard. time you put into that, the right. effort, and that's the work. all they talk about when they're playing. This guy's never won a major. You're right, like, ah. Sergio Garcia. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Finally, won a major. Sergio Garcia, one of the greatest golfers ever. But you're all, they're always going to say, yeah, but you never won a major. You know. Mm. Put aside the fact he's got a gazillion dollars and a beautiful girlfriend, and well, now, you know, he's got a, now he's got the green jacket. So he's now got, he's got he's the green jacket. Go. But it just shows you people like it's amazing how people like Rick Angel, Sergio Garcia, they have they have those blocks, right? And Rick obviously had a major major issue that just and he couldn't figure it. It wasn't like oh my my hands not on the ball right, mm-hmm. you know. It was in his mind, mm-hmm. and it was like something from his childhood kind of got remanifested, and then he conquered it with yeah. There, there's a lot about that Harvey. Dorfman and apparently Harvey did pass away a few years ago but you can just tell from reading about some of the excerpts that uh mm-hmm. that 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 became his father you know mm-hmm. and so uh, just amazing story so hey go to uh rickankiel.com the rick ankiel he's uh, at the rick ankiel t h e e i like yeah, that yes awesome the rick ankiel on on twitter and um, he was in town yesterday signing books he said he's here through the weekend so he might have some other things just check rickankiel.com so we've uh, got lots more big show ahead Almond for in you. the morning here at Almond in the Morning, I'm Tim Jones, and we will uh, I'll finally get to uh, going to talk a little bit about what Sean Spicer said about the Georgia Jungle Primer. It's priceless, as always. I love it. Keep it right here at Almond in the Morning. Tim Jones in for Jamie Almond here at FM News Talk 97.1.